Hello YouTubers, I have had a request by DJ Matty Man to do a um, quick review of my HTC Wildfire. So what I'm going to do is just sort of generally go through the stuff, have a look at the apps, and I've got a couple of tips which I can, which I'm going to tell you to help you if you've got the HTC Wildfire. First up, I shall compare it to some other technology that I've got. Here's the iPod, fourth generation. HTC is thicker. Then we've got the Nokia C3, there it is, the C3 is slightly larger, there we go, and lastly we have the Sony Ericsson X10 Mini Pro, lovely jubbly, right, so let's have a little look around, right, stick the old macro on. Right, first up we've got the home screen button, menu button which brings up the settings in the apps, back button, search on the internet button and the trackball, optical trackball button. The only time I actually use this is when I'm taking video or pictures because that's what you use to take the video or pictures. Other than that I don't really use it to be honest. Right, on the bottom I think that's a microphone and you've got a little speaker there. On the side you have the USB as well as the volume rockers. Then we have the jack for headphones. What uh, The thing that you use to open up to get to the battery. The on button, uh, nothing on this side. Then we have, I think, that, I think that's another mic. Obviously you've got the camera lens and the flash. Um, so yeah, there you go. The battery, it is quite tricky to get to it and I'm not going to do that now because it's a bit of a pain but you have the um, micro SD card under here which I think is a little bit annoying because it means you've got to take this off to change the SD card which is a bit of a shame okay so let's have a look um, to turn the screen on you've got to press the on button and then you just flick that down I have uh, the 2.2 Android firmware on this, um, beautiful widgets is there, speed dial is there, various different apps, um, but I'll sort of talk about them in a minute. So there you go. Two tips that I've got for you guys. When I first started using this, I had a problem with, I turned the vibrate off in the settings under sound, I think it is, and even though when I was typing text messages, there was no vibrate, when I went into the dial screen to dial up, there was, when I pressed the keys like this, um, there was vibration, which I couldn't understand why, they, why it did that. I went on all the forums and basically I couldn't find any way of turning that off. The only solution was to get this app, which is the Dialer One app and in the settings you can actually turn the vibrate off so I go into menu go into menu go into settings behavior settings vibrate there it is and you just turn it off um, which is really helpful the next app that you that I found was the calculator app because when I was using the calculator on the Android when I typed on here, you get vibration again, which is really annoying. Press menu, go into settings, and there it is, and you can turn the vibration off. See? So that is a handy tip for you guys. If you want to turn the vibration off on the dial pad or on the calculator, then um, the two apps that I would have a look for is the calculator app and the dialer one app, which I found really helpful, and it saved me on battery life. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, I charged this about three days ago and I've been using it quite a lot, internet, text messaging, using it as a phone, etc, etc. I would say sort of med medium to heavy use and I, it's only on 46%, which I think is pretty groovy, um, which is far better than what the Sony Ericsson could do, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, various different apps, I would recommend getting Advanced Task Killer and Cache Clean, they are two apps that I use quite a lot. Also, um, ES File Explorer, which helps to install apps off your SD card. 
Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, sync settings. Sync settings takes you straight to background data so that you can turn it on and off when you're not using the internet, which is quite useful. That's my apps. Go to the camcorder. Now, I do like the way they've set out this camcorder. Obviously, it's a little bit annoying that you don't get the um, VGA. Best camera resolution for this phone is the QVGA, I would say. I've got about 24 frames per second out of the QVGA. I like the fact also that you can turn off the autofocus, which is really handy. Um, I'll put some video clip samples at the end of this video so that you can see what the SIF and the QVGA is like. Um, but there are loads of options also with the photo still side of it. You get a lot of options as well, which is quite handy. You've also got effects, um, contrast, change, etc. And you can improve the brightness, which is really groovy. The only thing that did annoy me is the zoom. You do get zoom, but you have to use it before you start recording, which is a little bit annoying. But generally speaking, if you have it on the Q QVGA setting, you can get some average video out of it. The only two gripes that I've got with this is one, the display. If you leave the display on, I mean I've got this on about 35%. If you leave the display on, it eats up battery life like it's gone out of fashion. Um, as you can see, it's on 20% already and if I leave it, I'll probably go down another percentage as I'm doing this review which is a little bit annoying. I see, there you go, it's gone down to 45%. This was on 50% this morning, and I left it, left the display on by accident in my pocket for about 10 minutes, and it went from 50% to 47%. Since doing this video, which is now seven minutes long, and the previous take, which was 12 minutes long, it's gone down by 2%. Um, which is a little bit annoying, I find, because it means that you've got to basically turn the display off in order for the battery to be any good, which is a real annoyance about the Android phones. The only other gripe that I've got is obviously the camera. Um, the stills part of it is okay, um, but the video, you know, SIF, the SIF video is hardly worth having because you only get about 15 frames per second at the most out of it, and the QVGA video obviously is a lot better, but the minute you try and stretch it out to VGA, the quality just goes. Um, it will be interesting to see how the um, SIF and the QVGA samples work when I put them in as VGA on um, YouTube. So I will be interested to see how they work. But there you go, that's my overview of the HTC Wildfire. Is it worth getting? I would say so. Now that the, the Wildfire S has come out, this is quite a quite cheap. Um, I got mine quite cheap. And it's about the same price as the Sony Ericsson. But it is quite a good phone. I am really enjoying it. I love the size of the screen. I mean, when you compare it to the Sony Ericsson... Obviously there is the X10 and the X8, but I really do like this screen. I think it's a quite nice screen. The Wildfire S, I think the battery isn't as good. Um, and even though you have 720 by 480 resolution on the video, you still only get about 24 frames per second, which I think is a bit naff, and the quality doesn't seem as good. I think if you're looking for a phone to do good video, then I think you've got to look at the higher end phones like the X10 range and the Sony Ericsson Arc and the Samsung Galaxy S and phones like that because on these type of phones you don't seem to get very decent video unless you go for the Sony Ericsson. Yes, but then obviously you've got the battery life issue. So there you go. Okay, well that's my overview. Now I'm going to put up some sample videos. I um, hope you've enjoyed this a uh, little review. I've tried to keep it as short as possible. Any questions, please ask away. I've only just got this phone, so I'm pretty new to it. This is the HT Wildfire. I'm very happy with it, and I shall do some more later on. Okay, bye-bye for now.
Okay, this is my first sample with the QVGA on the HTC Wildfire. Um, it's a sort of half overcast day, it is quite sunny, which is quite nice. Um, there is a little bit of lag on the screen. Whether that lag will show on the actual video or not, I don't know. Um, but I just thought I'd do a quick little sample. It is quite windy, so the wind might affect the mic. Um, which then might affect what you can hear me say. Okay, well that's the QVGA, now let's try the SIF. So this is the SIF resolution. What I'm going to do is put them both in as a VGA size just to see what it's like when both of them are stretched. According to the frames per second, the um, QVGA gets to about 24 frames per second and the CIF gets about 12 to 19 frames per second at the most. Um, you get the most amount of frames per second in daytime shots. If I was to put it indoors, there you'd, you'd be lucky to get 10, to be honest. Um, but there you go, that's the CIF sample. I hope you've enjoyed this these reviews, and I shall do some more later on. Okay, bye-bye for now.